baby. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. You're such a sweet baby. You're such a sweet baby. Delicious. Is that the most delicious pay in the world? Yeah. Hi, welcome to episode 13 of this week's Fire Events podcast. So I took a little unintentional hiatus from podcasting um, between some personal life drama and some health issues. I just have not had any energy um, and I also just haven't had any time to knit. Um, so I didn't have anything really to show until now. Um, but thank you guys so much for all of your kind words on Instagram and Ravelry. Um, so many people kind of checked in with me to make sure I was doing okay. Um, and it just, it meant the world to me. So thank you so much. So today we are going to have um, all our usual segments. <laughs> um, there will be uh, works in progress, Finished objects, you guys. I've got finished objects. Um, there will be what I'm watching. Um, there, will, I guess there could be a what I'm reading. Nah, not really. I haven't been reading that much. Whoops. Um, and then there will be just some general life chatter, acquisitions, and shop news. So thank you so much for joining me today. Let's start with finished objects because I'm so excited to finally have some. <laughs> um, I have a really bad habit of um, finishing my socks and then waiting forever to put in the afterthought heels. So that's what I did <laughs> yesterday. Um, I just put in a bunch of afterthought heels. So my first FO, and these are not blocked and the ends are not woven in because I weave in my ends after blocking. Um, but you'll still get the, the general idea. I'm still calling them finished. <laughs> so these are my Halloween-y socks. And um, in Sweet Sparrow Yarns, I'm a mouse, duh, colorway inspired by Mean Girls. And the heels and toes and cuffs are um, in my Peach Fizz colorway. I'm so excited with how these came out. I think they came out so cute. And I really like that they're Halloween-y, but they're not so Halloween-y that I can't wear them the rest of the year. So, very excited about these. It's pretty warm here this morning, so I'm just drinking water. Um, this is one of my favorite mugs. It's so cute. It's pale pink and it has all these little speckles like a bird's egg and the handle looks like a twig. Um, it also came with a little um, sugar spoon that has a bird on top of it and it perches on the side of the mug. It's so cute. Um, I got this when I was um, visiting the Naples Botanical Garden in Florida with my Aunt Mary Rose and my brother. So it's pretty and it has good memories attached. My second finished object is another pair of socks. These are Hermione's Everyday Socks. Ooh, someone's honking outside, I hope you can't hear that. Um, and this is Knit Picks Felici 
in the tea party colorway and then the heels toes and cuffs are just in one of the nitpick stroll gray heather colors these are so cute i'm so happy with them i think these will be so perfect for curling up in on a snowy morning so that brings us to works in progress and my first work in progress is another afterthought heel <laughs> um so i knit these socks these are also hermione's everyday socks out of a sock blank by Dyed in the Wool Yarn Company, and I just hadn't added the heels. So I am working on that. Um, these are getting heels in the um, Wonderland Heather colorway from Knit Picks, just in their Stroll Heathers. Um, and I'm very pleased with that. I think the blue is a really fun little contrast to the pink. So I'm just working on the first one of those. I haven't started on the second one yet. My next work in progress, um, you've seen before. <laughs> this is the latest square in my Scrumptious Memories quilt. I made a little error in this one. Um, when I seamed it up, I did it on the, well, the incorrect side. I don't want to say the wrong side because I should have seamed it on the wrong side as in not the face of the square, but um, I was in the car and I wasn't really paying attention <laughs> and I seemed on the front. I thought about ripping back and um, fixing this, but I don't think I'm going to. I don't think it's going to be noticeable once the whole blanket is put together and I don't know, it doesn't, it doesn't really bother me that it's not perfect. I don't know, I mean, it's it's a handmade object, and um, for something like a memories quilt, I think that something like this doesn't bother me. If it was, if it was like a wearable, I think it would bother me, but um, I don't know, I, I kind of want this, this blanket to be like cozy and scrappy and like something that you would see in the Weasley's house. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, I don't think I'm going to take that out and, and redo that seam. I'm just going to leave it. And I have cast on my next square. It's just a little bitty mini square right now. Um, and so far in this I have, I'm a mouse, duh, and um, a mini skein that I received in a swap. I actually can't remember what this yarn is right now, but it's really pretty. It's like these burgundies and browns. And I'm thinking of this square as kind of my autumnal square. I started it um, in the car with Rob uh, on our way to go apple picking, so I decided to put together a lot of uh, very autumnal colors um, so that this square is kind of a memory of this time of the year. And my next color will be Pikachu. This is from a mini skein set um, that I got from Lara of the Fawn and the Fox. And it's the first uh, Pokemon mini that I'm using, so I'm really excited about it. And then the other colors that I will be using in this square Um, there's this really pretty sort of peachy, blushy orange, um, which is Tash Merino Light. There's no colorway on here, but I think I got this in um, in one of the like Homespun House swaps where it was like the mini skein swap where you took out a, however many minis you wanted and then replaced them and then sent it on to the next person. Um, so this mini came from Gilara on Ravelry, and she has this super cute little tag on there, which I will definitely be saving and putting into my knitting journal. I'll be using this pretty squishy two-ply in tonal browns, and this is a mini skein from Starling Bird on Instagram, so thank you. I think this one might be two. 
I think it is, she, um, she winds her minis into these like tiny little center pole balls, which is just the cutest thing. It's so cute. Um, so I think this must be from her as well. And I picked this one because it reminded me so much of apple picking. It's got the like Granny Smith green and the pinky red, um, some deep yellows. I just thought it was the perfect autumn apple picking color. And I actually based the entire block around this mini skein. This is Tread Sock Yarn in the Forest Walk colorway from Hampton Artistic Yarns. This will also be in this block. And I got this in my mini skein advent calendar from Hampton Artistic Yarns last year, which was so much fun. You guys, that was like one of my favorite things about the entire Christmas season last year. Um, I love advent calendars. Um, I'm not religious, but I get very into the more secular side of Christmas. I absolutely love Christmas. Um, and I thought this one was very pretty because it still has all the greens um, of late summer, but it's also got some browns and pale yellows and oranges um, of like the beginnings of fall. So I thought that was a really pretty one for this square. Bucky is prowling around I can tell he's gonna jump up on the couch with me. He has that look about him. And then the last color that I will be putting into this square is, oh, it came a little unrolled in my project bag, is this pretty sky blue, um, which I think that's one of my favorite parts about autumn is just that gorgeous crisp blue of the sky. So that's, all the colors for this block. And one more work in progress. Um, now that she has had her baby shower, I can say on the podcast that my best friend, Marissa, um, who has been my best friend since we were 10 years old, is having twins. Um, so she is having a boy and a girl, and I have decided that I need to knit them all the things, as you do. <laughs> um, so I've cast on the garter stitch ear flap hat from Pearl Soho, and I'm not quite done with the first one yet. It's a little scrunched up on this needle. Let's see here. There we go. So, oh, it's hard to see in this light. Sorry about that. Well, this is teal yarn from I think it's Barocco Vintage. Yeah, it is. It's Barocco Vintage. Um, and I think my plan for doing this baby knitting, because I want to knit all the baby things, um, is that I'm going to knit some pieces that are like more traditionally girly colors, some pieces that are more traditionally masculine colors, but the majority is going to be like a lot of gender neutral colors. Not that, not that any color can't be gender neutral, but um, Marissa actually said at her baby shower that just to, just to irritate people who um, feel like they, like the only acceptable way to dress babies is in the like heteronormative pink for girls, blue for boys colors. Um, she said she was actually going to um, irritate them by putting the pink on her son and the blue on her daughter. So. I <laughs> so my plan of action is to just knit a lot of very um gender neutral colors and that way I mean she's gonna have two babies so I don't feel like she's gonna have a lot of time to be like oh no no I can't put that hat on the baby that's a that's that's a girl's hat or that's a boy's hat or you know whatever the article of clothing is um so I want to knit her a lot of things that she can just kind of grab and go so I'm really excited about that. Um, I have so many baby knits in my Ravelry queue right now. It's ridiculous. Um, she's due in January, so I have a little bit of time. But um, so I think I need to organize it by like <laughs> by size, so that way I can start on all the newborn stuff now. You know, newborn and and one to three months, three to six months, and then um, after I gift her all of those. 
I can start in on the 9 to 12 months, a year sizes. Um, and these kids are going to have so much knitwear, it's going to be ridiculous. But I can't help it. <laughs> She's my best friend. I want to make all the things for her children. Um, so that's all my works in progress. Um, next on my needles. Um, so Rob's birthday is in a few weeks and I know that he watches my podcast so I'm not going to discuss what I'm making, haha! -ha. <laughs> I'm making things. I don't think that's spoiling the surprise because making things is definitely um, how I show love for people so I'm sure he saw that part coming. <laughs> um, but after his birthday, I will show you guys what I made. I will take some pictures. Let's talk about what I'm watching. I don't know what happened, but I'm obsessed with crime shows. It is so unlike me. I am normally very... I wouldn't say that I stick my head in the sand, but um, I purposely try to avoid... Um, TV shows that are stressful uh, because frankly life is stressful enough <laughs> but um, I don't know I, I don't know if it's that I like the fact that by the end of this 45 minute episode um, you know that the problem will be solved and it's reassuring to think that that's how life actually works um, but I really have been into crime shows so right now I am binge watching Criminal Minds, uh, all 11 seasons are on Netflix and that is about the behavioral analysis unit of the FBI and it's really interesting. I really like it. Um, ugh, I don't know what that says about me. Um, but I guess other people like it too, right? Like there's 11 seasons so clearly it's not just me. Um, that's pretty much all I'm watching at the moment. Uh, I finished all of Wentworth, you guys. That ending, how could they do that? How could they do that? Ugh, oh, broke my heart. That's all I'll say on that. I don't wanna give any spoilers for anyone who's working their way through Wentworth. But um, another season is going to be coming out. I think it's pretty soon. So I'm really curious to see where the storyline goes uh, based on the developments that happened at the end of season four. Oh, it's such a good show. Acquisitions. So my mom and I went to the Endless Mountains Fiber Festival on September 10th and it was glorious. We go every year and it's just one of my favorite events of the year. It's so much fun. Um, it's become such a tradition for me and my mom and I really do look forward to it all year. Um, it's usually, that's usually where I do a lot of my yarn shopping. Um, this year I kind of reined myself in a little bit just because my stash is out of control. Uh, between, between all the yarn that I already had before I started dyeing yarn and then all of my like first tries at new colorways or skeins that came out a little bit, um, a little bit too different from how a colorway normally looks or just one of a kind skeins that I did at the end of a day of dyeing yarn where I just had some dyes left over and wanted to see what I could do with them. I don't need more yarn. I really don't. I want more yarn. That never goes away. But um, you guys, I just, <laughs> I recorded my iPhone and I just had a moment of like, what is that red square on my wall? Yeah, that's the record button. That's the button that you hit to stop recording. It's not on my wall. Mm -mm. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so this year I bought all fiber at the Endless Mountains Fiber Festival um, because somehow I can, in my brain, like that's very different from buying yarn, even though when you spin it, it becomes yarn. I don't know. I don't know why that's logical in my brain. But it is, so I will show you what I got. So my first purchase was 
this little um, twist of three different colors of Cormo from Marshmallow Farm. And they call this their fluff, which is so cute. I just thought these natural colors were so beautiful. I don't know yet what I'm going to do with this. I might spin it as a gradient. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'll spin it as a gradient and then make like a beautiful cowl or something with it. It's just so soft and squishy. I love Cormo. And then my other three purchases were all from the Skirted Fleece Mill, which is run by my lovely friends Liz and Adam. And Liz has the most amazing color sense. I honestly almost never buy spinning fiber anywhere else after like after seeing her stuff because I just know that I will find so many things that I love in her booth or in their mill store. There's almost no point in me buying spinning fiber anywhere else. Since I don't dye spinning fiber myself, I feel no guilt. Nothing. So... This braid I had seen on Facebook when Liz posted a little preview of, um, of their booth. And this is called Princess and the Frog, and it is merino, bamboo, and silk. Um, and they sell their roving in eight ounce braids. So it's really nice to be able to get a really big project. So it's these beautiful lilacs and mints and some teal and some natural white. It's so pretty. I love it. It's so soft. And I saw that on Facebook. I knew I wanted it and I grabbed it. This one, this is the most like magical, beautiful braid of fiber I've ever seen. It seriously just blows me away. This is, uh, the color is called Fairy Lights, and it's eight ounces of merino, flax, and tessa silk. And I have never seen anything like this before. I hope you can see the flax in it on camera. They're these, like, they're these strands. And the colors are just so delicate and beautiful and the flax gives it this sort of wild, woodsy feel, in addition to just being soft and pretty. And I love it. It's honestly the most beautiful braid of fiber I've ever seen, and I can't wait to spin this. And I think I'm going to spin one ply of this and ply it together with this roving. This is eight ounces of Falkland in the dewdrop colorway. And I hope you'll be able to see on camera the really beautiful, subtle colors in this. It's mostly just natural cream, but it has these hints of lavender and pink and gray. It's so beautiful. I absolutely love it. And um, <laughs> Liz and Adam know me very well, and they know that I love pastels. And they actually, when they were dyeing the yarns, or dyeing the uh, braids of fiber, rather, they uh, were betting on which I would buy because they knew that I would buy pastels. <laughs> and Adam had bet that I would buy Dewdrop. And I did. <laughs> um, there's something so special about really knowing the people who produce um, a product and the fact that they kind of know you and they know your taste there's something about that that's just incredibly um it's just such a good experience it's it's so special and um they do have an etsy shop skirted fleece mill and i will link to that in the show notes um where you can buy their incredibly beautiful fibers and they actually also spin gorgeous gorgeous yarns um, which, oh, I hesitate to even say this because <laughs> I want it for me, but, um, they had a yarn base that was, um, made with fox down, which I didn't even know was a thing. I didn't even know that foxes had down. Um, and I forgot to buy some. I was so excited about the fiber that I forgot to buy some of this yarn. So I'm going to have to write to them and ask if I can... If I can order a skein because it's so beautiful and so soft 
Um, and then my last acquisition. I have never really seen this before. This is a sheet of wool felt that has these little alpacas on it and then felted in to the sheet of felt are these yarn scraps. I'm gonna get closer so you can really see it. Hi. <laughs> and I chose one with yarn scraps of um, mauve and sort of berry color, some yellow, some gray, and some brown. And I just thought it looked like a beautiful bird's nest. And I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. <laughs> I just loved it. So, oh my God. <laughs> so, I was thinking maybe I would keep this next to my bed for when, oh my God, I look so crazy. <laughs> um, for when I'm knitting in bed and I just want a little something to put over my shoulders. But it's not, this one isn't the softest. Um, my mom bought two also, well, they were like, buy, it was buy four things, get one free in this booth. So my mom and I each picked out um, one of these. And then my mom bought some dryer balls and uh, and then we got to pick something for free. So my mom picked another one of these. But hers were in um, like a cream color felt base and I think that it must have been from a different um, breed of sheep, well obviously. <laughs> but hers were like a little bit softer and this one's a little scratchy but I just loved these colors so much that I couldn't pass it up. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with this yet. Um, it would be a beautiful table, table runner. It would be a gorgeous rug. <clears throat> I have a little space right next to my bed um, in front of my love seat because um, I have like a little reading nook. I'm way too close now. <laughs> I have a little reading nook in my bedroom um, with a love seat and a little small bookshelf. Um, and there's a, a little space between that and my bed. And I think this would actually be a really great rug for right there. But I'm just trying to decide whether I would actually get to use it or whether the cats would just claim it as their own. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with this, but it was so beautiful that I just couldn't resist it. And I really love it, and I'm very glad that I bought it. General life chatter. Um, thank you guys so much for all of your kind words about my new tattoo. Um, I'm not going to try to show it on the podcast because I feel like that would be a disaster, but I am going to insert a picture here. So I had my tattoo done um, on Friday, September 2nd. Um, it was done by Maria Leone at uh, Red Baron Inc. in New York City, and it was the best tattooing experience, you guys. It was great. Um, Maria was just so kind and so sweet, um, and yeah, it was just, it was amazing. She completely understood uh, what I wanted and the aesthetic I was going for, and I'm so, so happy with this tattoo. It makes me so happy every time that I look down at it, um, which I do a lot because I love it and I can't stop looking at it. <laughs> um, it took about six hours. <laughs> so I did that kind of all in one go. I needed a little break after the first 20 minutes, um, which I haven't really experienced that before, but I started getting lightheaded and um, you know that feeling when like you can't hear super well and your eyes start going a little dotty. Um, I was having that happen um, and Maria was really, really sweet about it. She said, well, we're, you know, we're sitting here and we're talking and we're laughing and then I start stabbing you with this needle. So your body's not really expecting that. Um, so I took a little break and, um, Maria gave me some M&Ms <laughs> and then we went back to it and I was good for the next like five and a half hours. Uh, I read almost all of the second Harry Potter book. <laughs> Um, and 
yeah, it was it was a wonderful experience. Uh, I would absolutely recommend Red Baron if you are in New York City and looking for a tattoo artist or a tattoo studio. They have um, many different artists. I think they have like five different artists. And each of them has a very distinctly different style, which I love. I really like when you go to a studio and you can kind of tell by the artwork around each artist's space um, who sits there. And it was just a really wonderful experience and I would highly recommend them. And lastly, I have some shop news. So I have um, been sewing up some project bags for the Sweet Sparrow Yarns shop. Um, I love to sew, obviously. My name all over the place is Julie Rose Sews. And I thought, hey, I should do some actual sewing um, because I love fabric. <laughs> Almost as much as I love yarn, there's something so fun about buying fabric. And since I work in the garment district of New York City, I have access to a lot of really great fabrics. Um, and I wanted to share that with you guys. So I will be putting project bags in the shop Tuesday, September 20th at 6 p.m. Um, and this is just kind of the first round. There will be more bags in each of these fabrics available. Um, but if they sell out and you didn't get the fabric that you wanted, feel free to just send me a message and um, I'm happy to um, to set up a custom listing for you and that way you can make sure that you get the fabric that you want. So first is this little guy. Um, I'm calling this series of bags FICA because um, they have these great little coffee cups and uh, sugar bowls and just everything that you would need for a wonderful afternoon coffee break. Um, and all of my bags are lined in just a natural cotton. It has these these pretty little like flecks in it, which I really like. And each bag also comes with a progress keeper as the zipper pull. So on my FICA bag, that is this really cute little um, antiqued silver teapot or kettle so that's first and there will be two of these bags in the shop next is Miss Honey's Cottage and I based this um, combination on my Miss Honey colorway of yarn so that would be a, a fun thing to do is to put your Miss Honey project in a Miss Honey bag um, and these bags are all uh, one skein project bags they would be really great for socks or a small shawl so here's this one I really love this yellow mustard fabric with the flowers and Oh, and each bag also has my little, my little sweet sparrow tag, which I'm very excited about. And the Miss Honey bags have a little gold teapot because um, Miss Honey makes tea for Matilda the first time that she visits her. And these bags are, um, they're lightly interfaced. So they're sturdy and you, they'll definitely like they'll definitely stay up on their own with a project in them. But they're also pretty soft because I know that a lot of the time what I'm doing with my project bags is putting them in my purse to take with me everywhere I go. So they're easily kind of you can fold them down and put them in your purse. And Oh, I also wanted to talk a little bit about why I construct the zippers the way that I do. So um, I construct my bags with the zipper extending out past one edge and then I put this little tab on the end and that's so that you can really open your bag up all the way. So just to give you a visual of that because I know that um, <laughs> when I am bringing a project with me I like to bring all the little notions that I'll need and sometimes they can get like down into the corners of your project bag 
and it can just be difficult to see. Um, so what I really love about doing zippers this way is that you can then open the bag completely. You can see all the way in. <laughs> um, and you can see all the way down into the corners and you can get your tapestry needle or um, your stitch markers or whatever you have uh, down in the depths of your project bag. Um, it just makes them really easy to use. And there will be three of the Miss Honey's Cottage project bags in the shop. And then lastly, um, my Halloween project bag for this year. So I wanted to choose um, some fabrics for my Halloween bags that did not feel um, like they could only be used at Halloween. I definitely wanted them to be able to be used year round. And I think that this fabric really accomplishes that. So it's got this really adorable little girl um, in a little bunny mask, which I thought was so cute, surrounded by these flowers. And um, for the bottom fabric, on this one I chose a brushed cotton twill so it has the sturdiness of the twill that I use for all of my project bags but because it's brushed um, it gives it this really cozy um, almost flannel like feeling like it feels like a wool flannel um, and it's in this gorgeous heathered gray color which I just love and then the charm, the progress keeper for these bags is a little gold bunny um, to match her little bunny ears. I really love that. I think that's so cute. Ah! <laughs> I definitely want to make one of these for myself too. Um, and then she just has her teal zipper and then the little zipper tab. So I hope that you guys enjoy these bags and um, I will be doing a yarn update in a few weeks. Um, I just haven't had a lot of time or energy lately to, uh, to do a full day of dyeing, but I'm feeling better so I'm, uh, I'm really excited to do some yarn dyeing and I'll let you guys know more about that um, when I know the exact date and time of the update. But the bags will be in my shop um, Tuesday, September 20th at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I guess that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching and I love hearing from you on all the various social media platforms. Oh, oh, oh. Um, I wanted to answer a quick question um, that I received as a comment on one of my earlier uh, podcast episodes but for some reason I, I didn't see it until recently and the question was did you design your logo um, so here is my logo and the answer to that is yes I did um, I I really enjoy doing uh, little like logo design and branding projects it's something I find really fun um, so when I decided I was going to open a shop and start a podcast, um, it just made sense for me to design my own logo and, uh, draw it myself and, um, do all of my own, like, choosing of fonts, and I'm, I really like it, so I'm, I'm really glad that you guys do too. Thank you very much. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful week. I am hoping to record again on Sunday, this coming Sunday. Uh, so I will talk to you soon. Bye, guys. My hair doesn't fit in the frame.